that's the biggest pitfall that I see people um, hurting their brand with is just not being consistent. Yeah, and it seems like it's it's just common sense, but that's what kills probably ninety nine percent of us. You know, we get we get the Twitter, we get the YouTube, we get the Facebook, whatever, whatever, and maybe we do one or two live streams, and then within a week we think, well, that didn't go as good as I as I thought it would. Yeah. Of course, it's not because it, you it's the first week, it's the first month, it's the first half year. You know what I mean? So. If it's not consistent, no one's gonna pay attention. You know, it's like a it's like a uh, friendship or a relationship. If you're not consistent, no one's gonna believe you. So you just really have to be dedicated to the goal, no matter what. And if that goal is to build your brand up, and you fall off after a month or two. People, people are going to fall off. Your fans are going to fall off just, just the same. So when I was gone, I just automated uh, my Facebook posts. Or you can automate, you can schedule your, your YouTube videos. I had a YouTube video scheduled for yesterday. I had, I've had um, beats to go scheduled to appear on my beat store while I'm gone. Just, just so that there's always that consistency because I want to upload a new video, at least one new video, usually two every single week. I want four posts a week on my Facebook page, you know, so I just schedule that stuff. Twitter is easy because you can just tweet about whatever because it's more conversational, but with Facebook and with YouTube, you just want to be on a, on a more consistent posting schedule. I mean, you know, I always preach to my, my beat club members because that was kind of my path coming up in the game is I attach myself to one or two different artists very early on and we yeah. just kind of built our careers together and um you know i think there's a lot of benefit in doing that in in crafting your sound with another artist and uh attaching your name that early on um can be helpful because as he's coming up then you know obviously your production is is getting shine at the same time um, but when it's just me and, and one other artist and we just have our, our plan together, we're working on a DIY or an independent le uh, level, it's it's a lot easier. You know, you're not getting an advance, but hey, there's crowdfunding, there's pre-order. Uh, there are ways around that and, and, and you can uh, you can create a much less stressful situation for yourself if you want your music to be self-released. Uh, we have to kind of look at ourselves, even though we're producers, we have to look at ourselves as brands, as artists, because if we don't, that means we're going to miss out on, on, on these, these additional revenue streams that, that all these other artists are taking advantage of. Right. You know what I mean? So there's no reason that we can't make a living off of our music, regardless of, of, of whether or not we become these, these household names, because other, other people are doing it. Yeah. You know, and with, with production, it's not just a matter of building our brands up because we have these, these big records and these big hit singles. You know what I mean? It's, it's not just a matter of being the number one seller on Beat Stars or My Flash Store. There are a lot of different things we can do to create brands for ourselves, to deliver music and, and other content directly to the people who want it. And as long as we're doing that, we can support ourselves. <laughs> My thing was just seeing this incremental success, you know, whether it was, okay, I just made $50 tonight selling CDs to, you know, wow, we're now we're getting 300 a show instead of 50 a show to, yeah. we just got on the front page of the biggest local publication out to, okay, I got a gold plaque on my wall. Um, just seeing the incremental success and seeing how directly proportional it was to the amount of effort that I was putting in that really changed my perspective. Setting a goal is one of the best things you can do for yourself because everything you do goes back to that goal. Instead of just having this vague idea of success in your mind thinking, yeah, I just want to be big or I just want to get my music out there. That's really nothing specific. Your, your brain doesn't focus its power onto something if, the, if that something is unfocused. Mm -hmm. So I had a specific goal with a specific timeline. And I think that's that's what really helped me. In addition, with just kind of right place, right time, 
sort of the uh, luck scenarios. But because I used to be the angry, um, you know, why why can't I get in? Why can't I get in that type of person? You know, everything's rigged. Um, and of course, to an extent it is. But the fact that most success stories nowadays are happening outside of the industry structure means that though it may be rigged, you can just say, you know, forget all that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to create my own lane. And you circumvent the, the, these traditional structures that are blocking you out for whatever reason, whether it's political, whether it's um, your location, whether it's your lack of experience, whether it's your sound being a little too risky and experimental for the, for the traditional industry. You just work around them. That's all. I mean, you, 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 you work smaller, yeah. uh, but you, you know, people getting signed, you know what I mean? That That's not, that's not the, um, it's not always the best situation. So yeah, yeah. you got to understand a lot of these people just doing it themselves oftentimes are in much better positions than these industry dudes with hit records. Yeah, for sure. But because the game's so messed up, two things happen. Number one, there's very little money left over in, in so far as the traditional revenue streams are concerned, mm-hmm. um, which means that nowadays labels aren't developing talent. They're going on YouTube. They're seeing who has the, 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 the viral hit, and they're just picking them up and, and piggybacking off their success. Why? Because they're afraid. You develop somebody new, you invest all this time and money in them, right. they don't blow up, you lost your money. But yeah. if you look at YouTube, you see someone that's already doing it, you just have to pick them up, put a little bit of money behind them, and just collect all, all the proceeds that they would have gotten for themselves anyway. So that's, that's why A&Rs are in such a precarious position. This is just one example of people from the industry doing these, these little side hustles. So because A&Rs aren't signing new people like they used to be, it's, it's a much smaller risk and a much smaller reward. So now they got to do other stuff like do A&R song reviews and so forth. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. It's just a matter of you, re- you really considering what impact that's going to have on your career and your brand. You know, you might really, really want uh, an A&R to review your record. They might charge $150, but that $150 could have gone into Facebook ads. You could have reached, you know what I mean, uh, 50,000 people with that $150,000. So you just really need to understand what options you have and and, um, put that onto perspective insofar as your your short and long-term career goals are concerned because I've, I've seen it happen a million times where people just keep spending money on these what 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 i would consider these shortcuts where it looks like well this a and r works for such and such a label i'm going to pay for the song review because in the back of my mind i think hey if they really like it they might sign me it's not going to happen but you just spent 150 thousand 150 dollars for that that's you spending money for the wrong reason yeah you know what i mean it's not you're spending money for the the review itself you're, you're kind of trying to um buy a dream trying to buy a shortcut so this if you can balance being realistic and building a real fan base for yourself and really branding yourself with these other kinds of um inconsequential uh methods like a, a song review which you know there may or may not be value in then cool. If you want to eliminate that altogether and just focus on your brand and, and put all your money into your own direct marketing campaigns, cool. That that's personally what I would recommend. But you know, everyone everyone does their own thing. Right. 